Rarity Takes Manhattan, the first Rarity episode since Sweet and Elite. That was December 3, 2011. This one is January 4, 2014. This title is either a reference to the Muppets Take Manhattan, First We Take Manhattan, or Jason Takes Manhattan. It's obviously not Jason. The Muppets is a possibility, but the remaining one is actually specifically referring to the fashion industry. Won't you be a dear? Sure, I'll be a dear. Perhaps I can show you. No way, she's challenging me to a children's card game. I must warn you, I'm a god, like an Egyptian god. You know, where I pick a card and remember what it is and then you put it back in the deck so you can't look at it and leave. Thank you Based Marshmallow for putting her in her place. Rarity actually managed to get tickets to South Pacific after they sold out because she gave some fashion ocean liner some of her prom dresses. All the girls are excited about going to see the fiddler on the roof because musicals are actually programmed to deploy subliminal messages for males to receive a Nintendo BS from their female companion. Oh the beautiful city of Frank Sinatra, we finally get to see you after almost three years. If there's no protesters outside of Wall Street then this song has no meaning. Hey look, it's the poster for Cats, also known as the previous episode's pun. This city seems to resemble the New York from before Captain America was frozen. Well it appears Neon Lights is a fucking princess. He's beautiful. Parappa Rappa explains that the entire reason why she came to Big City is because of fashion show she's entering. Everything else is just supplementary like going to see Once Upon a Mattress. Tony's just bursting into song in random places at the drop of a hat? Who does that? Oh, Manhattan. Holy shit that caught me off guard. Apparently this song is called Generosity. Element of generosity my ass. Oh wait they gave up their elements, so that doesn't apply anymore. My face when Megan made them give up the elements just so they can get out of character more often. Oh she actually bought some food for Spike that's the most generous she's been since she's- I should laugh, but for Spike's sake this comic relief shit needs to stop. You call out his comic relief in Power Ponies, but now you're going back to it completely destroying that development of self-awareness. Only rarity more generous to strangers than her actual friends. No way, Fancy Pants is not only back, but he also has a fucking yacht. I'm seriously waiting for an episode with Spike, Fancy Pants, Shining Armor, Big Mac, probably Discord, and any other male character that wants to join in just shooting the shit. It would be my favorite episode. Proof that the Kalos region exists on Earth. This means that somewhere in the pony world, there's a group of ponies that will hun 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 omelet do fro mulch me against a wall. That pwn right there is voiced by Daniel Ingram in case you didn't k no. Look at these visual references, they're modeled after characters from the show Mad Men. I personally don't watch it, so I don't know. But it's nice to get these kinds of references. That guy experienced happiness once. He hated it. What? No! Oh, please God, no! Oh man, they had a pop culture reference in a cartoon. That has never happened before in the history of the known universe. Also, it's just a very small sight gag. It's hardly anything worth complaining about since it's not detracting from the overall episode. The worst thing Grumpy Fag did here was take the attention away from the Mad Men ponies. Applejack is best car Jack. Get it? because her name is Jack and she's acting like a Jack. From this song I've concluded that this is not rarity we are seeing, who am I watching? Is there anything left to do we can help you with? Take note of that line here kitties, it becomes very important to the story. There's nothing left for me to do but check in at the runway with my dresses by 2 this afternoon. Well, that's funny, because that clock over there makes it seem like that's only 10 minutes from now. Well shit, gotta go fast. <laughs> This is fucking New York, and there's only like three cabs in the entire town. Does every pony in this town want a cab? Because this is America, and everyone's fucking lazy to walk. Twilight is a fucking princess, and yet not only does nobody give a fuck, but Twilight doesn't abuse her authority. Take some authority! You're a queen! Queen it up, bitch! Using Twilight's royalty as a deus ex machina for the tax he would be lazy writing. It would also be out of character for Twee to abuse her power. That ticket episode in season 1 was all about how Twily hates accepting special treatment from others. The real question is why the hell is Twilight just wandering around such a big metropolis without any security? She's a princess, she's bound to get mugged or fucking stabbed. If the worst that happens in Manhattan is that people are just fucking rude then it's still a utopia when compared to Earth. Any pony else got a sneaking suspicion we're forgetting something? 
Oh boy, maybe someone should have helped Spike instead of having him carrying all of Rarity's shit. You know what else they could have done? Twilight could have teleported Rarity and all of her shit. Don't tell me she can't because she teleported half of the main six and Spike all the way across Equestria before. They still have three pones perfectly capable of flying as well. Speaking of flying, guess what Twilight hasn't done in over a month? She doesn't even use her wings at all. That must be the reason why no one knows she's a princess. Miss Rarity, how is it that all your competitors are here half an hour early and yet you arrive seconds before we begin? A queen is never late. Everyone else is simply early. Rarity then finds one of her old-time religion friends from her sewing circle club. Her name is Sari Poliomer. You know what would have been funny? If her name was spelled as U W R E Y, because that spelling means a carriage for horses or something. But no, Megan just had to miss out on another pun. The two catch up, and Rarity shows off her own custom-made fabric with an animated material. Like, mad props to Rarity. She actually made her own material. It reminds me of that Jello shit from Little Big Planet. Siri then asks if she can borrow a piece and use it for accents. Rarity then just gives away all of her dumb fabric instead of donating it to the Goodwill, because those people with poor incomes don't deserve quality. That bitch just takes off. The next day Rarity is ready to show off her fabric, but is surprised to see that Celery used every last piece to bypass YouTube's copyright filter. You stole it! I thought I... you put it there! Why would I put it there?! Kindness? Kindness?! You stole it! He stole it! Sari was friendly at first, but she took things under her wing by stealing Rarity's designs. So we have three rivals so far. Twilight and Trixie, or Sunset, Rainbow Dash and Lightning Dust, and now Rarity and Sari. Flim Flam Bros were a one-time use, Pinkies is coming up, and Fluttershy's will never come. How could this happen to me? It takes some small-town fillies a while to learn it's every pony for herself in the big city. Good. When people always say that the world is shit, I have to disagree. The world is only shit because that's the way we're making it. If we put aside our differences and stop being assholes, we can start to make the world a better place. Rainbow's hat says that she loves skyscrapers. First, there's the salon appointment to get our veins done. You never expect Apple Rack to be excited about that. But have you ever noticed that every time they get their manes done, they don't ever change? Rarity fits her best fits. Rarity tells Apple Jack's friends how Siri stole fizzy lifting drinks and how she now gets nothing. Wow, the only time you've actually used your element, it betrays you. That's what you get for putting that thing back where it came from. So help me. Come on, Rarity, fuck up. Lauren originally said that Rarity was supposed to be the element of inspiration. She's now gone and I gave her some dresses out of hotel wear. That'll go on her credit card. Rarity's gone full viva. This episode just turned into dress.myv. Her friends then start hating how she's acting, but the fashion show was the whole purpose of the trip, and the tickets were a free gift from her. It sucks she got their hopes up but yeah if they miss the musical they aren't out anything. Since they're now sweet shop workers, they're gonna miss out on eating out at the Golden Corral, so she could order some Domino's pizza as compensation. Don't fit. It'll be here in an hour. And like what George R.R. R. Martin always says, yeah yeah, they're still coming. The pizzas are on the way. Rarity's anger is justified. She's fucking ticked that one person she thought she could trust years ago has taken advantage of her generosity. Her friends now also seem to be taken advantage of her generosity. They wouldn't even go to the musical if it wasn't for her. But when she asks for their help, they're like, shit, nigga, we gonna miss that thing, so screw you and thanks for all the fish. <gasps> Dave Polsky just got away with making Rarity say Kong Ratu fucking Lations on a kid's show. All hail the guy with the Jewish name, instead of going to see the show. They actually remain loyal as a bunch of true friends by actually finishing her dresses. Rarity doesn't even show the least bit of gratitude. I'll admit she's being a cunt here. You're Rarity should have seriously patented that shit. Head Canon Sari is Diamond Tiara's mother. Do not steal. 
Rarity's new fashion line is literally made out of shit she stole from the hotel, and the other fashion horses are just eating it up. I can't believe this show. Lose the lampshade and it's actually pretty decent. I have a feeling that Rarity won because she already assisted in these three celebrities and other nefarious tasks. Solicitation with the judges, I see. Oh, I can't wait to celebrate with... Abandoning hurts. For just 60 cents a day, you could help these animals who feel unneeded. Don't wait. Call today toll-free at JG Wentworth 877 cash now and make a difference. Aren't you going to tell them about your fabulous pieces? Did you not just hear my commercial? What the hell was that? Rainbow power for days. This is probably foreshadowing that Rarity unlocked one of the keys to the chest. It's inside her heart all along. If the keys are actual inside their hearts, then the season finale is about Twilight tearing from the chests of her friends their still beating hearts in the final stages of a blood sacrifice to open the box that heralds the end of the universe. Uh, but miss, I, I, I didn't do anything. Dude, trust me, you're gonna need all the money you can get with a cutie mark like that. Wet maned Rarity returns. Rarity sings a reprise very saddy waddy because she thinks her friends have already took the midnight train going anywhere. Rarity episodes are definitely more mature in a sense. This for example is showing that someday Rarity is going to move to Canterlot or something and have a permanent job making clothes and that someday she's gonna have to say aloha to her fry ends BC as it's the curse of the time lords. Oh look they missed the train. I guess so door is closed. We missed the show because we overslept. Suri told us you lost. I like how they would have probably attended the show anyway, but they overslept from the overnight sweatshop. But Rarity lost? Well you win some you lose some I guess. This show shows that you can't always win, like on autumn temperature acquaintances. Yeah, you were pretty rotten. Wow, Applejack. I know your thing is honesty, but come on! The subtlety. It's lacking. But who cares I lost my shit so hard. To give her Apollo 11 edgies, Rarara said that she managed to get an exclusive show of Little Shop of Horrors just for the main 6 plus Barney. Apparently bronies don't know what the word exclusive means, it means that they get their own performance to themselves. Coco Pebbles is being forced to lie because it's the only job she has, but she's about to stand up for herself because she's kawaii as fuck. How it could I be so blind? They're actually watching the sound of music. What do you mean it's actually the maid of the mountain? Why couldn't you have watched Bye Bye Birdie? That's way more enjoyable. Spike confirmed for Smartest Pony. I it. Uh, I mean, it was right. Ghetto Dash. Now I've really seen everything. How did Rarity manage to get an exclusive show? Well, she actually sold her soul to a crossroads demon just like Daniel Ingram. But unlike Daniel, Rarity was only given till the end of the episode till the hellhounds bring her to hell. So this is how it all ends. This is how Rarity gets written off. At least the last thing she did on this earth was give a nice treat to her friends. Mind if I join you? Oh hey, it's Coco Beach. She came down to the Harlem Globetrotters Theater in Emerald City so she could say thanks to the wizard for giving her the courage she had always wanted. This is the first place trophy for fashion week. With my name on it. She actually won. Wow, Rarity's work managed to outshine Rarity's work. Who knew that she was better than herself? I brought you something to say thank you. A present? Oh Santa Hakaju. Jesus' birthday is already over. Rarity then gets an idea, since her and Coco Puffs can both make quality dresses, she makes her take her place so she doesn't end up going to hell way to dodge the bullet there, but you ended up killing off what could have been your assistant. Seriously I was hoping Coco Bandicoot would be Rarity's helper, but no she had to do this. Oh well at least we still have her. Unlike some of the previous morals, Dave Polsky actually made a realistic one. Art thieves shall burn in hell. What's in the box? Please be a key 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 rainbow thread what? Maybe it's a metaphorical key. The threads at the end are colored after the main six. Half-Life 3 confirmed. Hoenn remakes confirmed. The only question now is what's going to happen with all of these cliffhanger pieces? Is Rarity going to make a Technicolor dream coat? We've had the box. The shadow in the castle. Owie's so tall living. Scootaloo looking at her ass. The comic vanishes. Fluttershy might still be a bat. The threat. The Pony of Shadows will use the rainbow thread to pull Fluttershy's fang out. It was 